Hi, Rich Gravani. Welcome once again to Front Row. Have you seen any of these movies? Abducted 2, The Reunion, Rage of the Werewolf, Santa Claus, or Tromeo and Juliet? If you have, you want to join me in welcoming actress Debbie Rashan here on Front Row. I just want to know, first of all, uh, what it was like growing up in Vancouver? It was uh, Vancouver, British Columbia? Well, it's interesting because now it is a film capital of North America. Um, where I grew up, it was all farmlands, however. Ah. And um, it was very, very removed. Um, we lived in like the, the farmlands. I raised rabbits. Um, there was hardly anybody living within miles of us. And, and that's about it. I mean, it was very, very quiet. At a young age, I moved to Vancouver because I lived outside of the city. I lived in a small town. Mm -hmm. um, I moved to Vancouver and I started working and then I saved up my money and came to New York after a certain amount of years. Well, when did you first, uh, well, first of all, uh, were you a movie fan as a kid? Were, were there movies you Yeah, were? yeah. I used to get up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning to watch vampire movies, the Hammer <laughs> movies. Yeah. The um, Dunwich Horror, the Poe movies, like the Roger Corman stuff. Oh, I love those. And yeah, it's good stuff. So I mean, I was I was getting up in the middle of the night to watch the movies, and I found like I was really um, experiencing the beginning of my sexuality. So I would watch these like really sexy vampire women, you know, sort of like slinking around castles, and I thought. That looks like a lot of fun. Like, I wish I could be one of those women. Um, and <laughs> hopefully one day I'll get to be one of those women. Um, which I have yet to play. Well, I've played a vampire once, but never in a castle. So that, that will you, be a first. You played a vampire slash werewolf, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. But I wasn't in a castle. That's so true. You were behind like, bars. In a, in it's a, behind bars. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my home. The accommodations are a little bit rustic, but I'm sure you can understand why. I got your tongue? Don't worry. You won't be here long. But yeah, I mean, it was just like, it was so integrated with my uh, sort of coming of age. I mean, it was a little younger. It was, you know, six, seven, eight, nine even. Um, but I really associated those movies with entertainment, freedom, because I'd get up in the middle of the night and I was my own boss, you know, right. at that time everybody was sleeping. And, you know, and sexuality. So it was just like... Um, it just had a great impact on me. The whole package was very attractive. Yeah, right? yeah. exactly. And like you, you, you were quite young when you did your first film. That I'd like to hear about how that happened. Yes. Um, well, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version because it's sort of a long story. What got me there? Um, when I was about eleven, I was taken away from my family by the um, the province because mm -hmm. uh, they were not capable of raising me. So I was put in foster homes. They're very abusive. I was put in a halfway house, and then I ran away. Um, so I was basically living on the street in Vancouver, and one of the kids that I sort of befriended knew that they were having this casting call. Uh, Paramount Pictures was having a casting call in one of the hotels downtown. 
So they said, just go in there, you know, you just, they're going to take a Polaroid of you. You get paid and you get to be in a movie. So I went down there. I didn't even have any shoes on at that point. Mm -hmm. And so I walked in the, the office and Lynn Caro, I remember, uh, she said to me, are you available? And I said, yeah, I'm available. She said, um, how would you like to make uh, $300 a week? And you might as well have said a million to Whoa. me at that time, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, she said, and are you willing to dye your hair? And I said, absolutely. So she said, okay, you're going to have your hair dyed jet black on both sides and white down the center. And we're going to back home the white, so it's going to be like a skunk thing. Yeah. And that was for the punk movie, Ladies and Gentlemen, The Fabulous Stains. Right. Yeah, and I worked on it for three months. I had a number of lines, most of which were cut out. Um, the movie sat on the shelf for, I guess, at least a decade, maybe more. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still is not released. I, I can't believe it because I was checking. It's in the Leonard Moulton book. It's in there. And it was in the, the theaters. It was in the theaters. Something happened where uh, Lou Adler, who directed the movie, he produced Rocky Horror Picture Show. Mm -hmm. Something happened, and Joe Roth, who was head of Disney, who just left recently, he was producing this movie, and um, they really thought this was going to be great. I mean, they got Fee Wabel from the Tubes. He was really popular at that time. Guys from the Sex Pistols, guys from The yeah. Clash, uh, Ray Winston, a huge uh, star from London. They had Diane Lane, L Laura Dern, Laura Dern yeah, um, yeah. and a whole bunch of other people. And they really thought this was going to be something, and it really was. And the woman who wrote it, Nancy Dowd, had just won an Academy Award for another uh, movie that she had written. So it had a lot of promise. There was a lot of stuff going on. It was They were spending crazy money on the movie. And uh, when they were done, the, the director just didn't like it. It didn't come together this for whatever Lou reason. Adler? Lou Adler. Lou Adler. Yeah, didn't like and that. I guess the studio as well, Paramount. So they sat on it. In 1984, it premiered at the Film Forum here in New York City. Oh, yeah. Know it well. And... Um, then it went to, directly after that, it went to cable for mm -hmm. a very brief period of time, one or two months, and then it just whew, disappeared. Wow. It didn't exist anywhere. Then it was on VH1. You know how they have the rock and roll yes. movies? Yeah. It was on there for the first time. I think it was in, I don't know how many years I said it. I don't know if it would be 19 or if it could be. Maybe it was. Um, just say one year, maybe two years ago. Oh. And then that's when I actually did um, an interview for the Independent Film Channel because it became this cult movie. I don't even know how people got copies, mm -hmm. but seeing it was on cable at one time in like 1984, 85, right. people did tape it, yeah. so it existed. Right. So it did build into this cult following for the movie, mm -hmm. and um, I don't even know how you know, the kids got a hold of it, but they did. Even Courtney Love in an interview, she was like, oh yeah, I had this bootleg copy of The Fabulous Stains and it's what inspired me to start this girl band. And people had seen it and it got around. Right. So the point is that it's, it like many other movies, they may go underground for a couple of decades, but that sort of makes them, you know. More even desirable probably. More desirable, yeah. I yeah. think so. Now I got a kick out of something you said. Uh, that you were reading books on acting. And yeah. <laughs> I really got a kick out of this. You said, I decided to go to New York to, to learn from the, from, the, from the people who, uh, not the guy who interpreted the book, from the people who, uh, wrote, the who, book. who wrote the book. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there I That's was. That's very interesting. That, that, that shows you're really serious. Yeah, yeah, it was really serious. And everybody said, why aren't you going straight down to L.A.? You're on the West Coast. And I felt like, ah, L.A. is for suckers. Everybody in L.A. is going to hate me now. LA is for suckers. I want to go to New York where everybody's serious. Yeah. You know, I really want to learn. Yeah. And, um, you know, I want to be good. I'm not concerned with being a movie star. Mm -hmm. I wanted to to express myself and act, and, and I knew I wasn't going to really express myself if I was going to just be, you know, a two-dimensional, typical run-of-the-mill actress. Right, somebody who didn't bother to get trained. Yeah. And you trained with Lee Strasberg? No, that's... Uh, no, at his studio. At his school? Yeah. I trained with um, Penny Allen, who um, was, is um, Al Pacino and Harvey Keitel's coach when they do movies. They go to her. 
Um, and she was Lee Strasberg. She was a teacher from that studio. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I hear a little bit about your first New York made film? I think it was Lonely in America. Is that the one? Yeah. That's was that the first one? Um, with Barry Brown? Yeah, he directed it. Well, um, I th that was one of the first ones. I, it may have been the first one. Um, Barry Brown is Spike Lee's editor. Right. And he was making his first movie. And it was about a Pakistani gentleman who, who comes to America. And his family is in the newspaper business, like in newspaper stand business. Yeah. And they want him to, you know, continue down this, you know, family tradition. And he wanted to learn computers. And they were like, no, 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 that's not for you. That's not for you. You're going to be unhappy if you go into, you know, another culture where you're not comfortable. And um, they even set him up with this bride that they were shipping over to marry him and everything. He had never met her. And he was like, no, you know, I want to be an American. I want to meet an American woman, you know, and have an American life. And so he sort of had that struggle. So he started uh, meeting women, typical New York women, crazy. One was crazy in this way, one was crazy in that way. So he gave up. He just like, oh, I can't take it. These people are, these women are crazy. And then that's when he meets my character. My character's really nice and compassionate. And, and um, he was being exactly to me how the women were being to him. Mm -hmm. And so after um, we had an evening together, like a date, um, he said to me, uh, I forget exactly what he said, but he blew me off because he was at this point, he was really shut down. He was really, you know, over it. And then I just said, okay, fine. And I left. And then he realized, I just made the biggest mistake in my life. Yeah. You know, here is this, this woman. And then he comes running after me and I'm gone. And then on goes the story. So it was um, one scene, but a really cool scene. And I had a lot of fun. And again, here's a movie that went to film festivals. It's never been on television. I don't know if you can rent it. It's just one of those independent movies mm -hmm. that, you know, just. It's out there somewhere. Right? It's out there. You know, I'm sure you can buy it on eBay. Yeah. You know, promote eBay a bit. Well, uh, I, I hope you don't feel I'm rushing. There's so much I want to cover, and we have this. No, half no, hour. I'm, I'm probably not going fast enough. No, you go. You're, you're doing fine. I just, uh, I'm only I, in I 80, wanted to get 88 to. now. Okay. To uh, abducted. Yeah, let's skip ahead. Two. Abducted two. First of all, was that a sequel? There was an abducted one. There was I know an abducted you one. It. I was not in it. It yeah. was uh, based on a true story where a woman, I think it was in Montana, uh, is jogging in the mountains and she's abducted by this guy. It was a real story. Oh, I remember that story. Yeah. yeah that so, didn't seem like that long ago either. But uh, they said, hey, you know what? People loved it when this woman was abducted. Let's get three abducted. Ah. I mean, you know, it's, it's a formula that works. If they liked it when one, we give them three. We throw in uh, Jen Michael Vincent because he was partying with Dan Haggerty at the time. So Dan Haggerty pulled him in. And uh, they were there for a week and shot a few scenes. And, uh, and that was it. It was supposed to be a camping trip with best friends. But it turned into a terrifying nightmare of the worst kind. We have to go get her before he hurts her. I'm scared. They must go beyond their fear. Abducted to the reunion. I had a really good time. I mean, that was possibly even to date. I've done better work. I've done better movies. But I will say one thing. Going up into the mountains in Canada, in Vancouver, where I'm from, mm. and shooting a movie for six weeks on the mountain, living there, shooting. It was such an experience, yeah. you know? I just used so much of myself. Yeah. Like, even if, even if the, the movie's a joke and people don't like it, no. it's still, it was still, like, such an experience for me. Yeah, I, I just, you know? I thought you were very good in it. I, you know, well, I, thank I, you. I, I appreciate that. Well, I remember coming back through the airport when I came back to New York, and I felt like, I felt like I had landed on another planet because my head was so into this, this part. 
And it wasn't the type of thing where you go back to, you know, a hotel and you're living in a city and people go out at night like they usually do on shoots mm -hmm. to distract themselves. I was like really living it mm -hmm. all the time, yeah. all the time. So when I came back to New York, it was just like the decompression. It was like, whoosh, it was like you were on a ride and you're like, oh. It's the most outstanding cast in a most outrageous movie. I did that, baby. Debbie Rashawn. You shut up. Trent Haga. Is that it? Michael R. Thomas. Wonderful. Nathan Sears. And I'm so confused. Conrad Brooks. I hope you're paying attention. Zachary Lee. <laughs> and many more in a film co-written by Brink Stevens. How are you? <laughs> Dr. Horror's Erotic House of Idiots. <laughs> Cult Radio Agogo calls Dr. Horror a front-of-the-line pass to a fun house of genre pals and childhood memories for every monster kid. Of course. Micro Cinema Fest awarded Debbie Rashawn and Trent Haga Best Actress and Actor in a Comedy. Now we're cooking. And TheMonsterClub.com calls Dr. Horror's Erotic House of Idiots their movie of the year. How lucky I am. Dr. Horror's Erotic. House of Idiots? Why you? A special three-hour DVD spectacular. I think I see your point. I don't know if we're going in chronological order here. Probably not, but I want to talk about your association with trauma. Ah, that's no, that's right. That's right, because... Even though I met Lloyd Kaufman in ninety two, ninety three, I didn't start. I didn't make uh, my first movie with him till ninety five. Okay. Um, I was shooting skits for Cinemax, Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. I think it was called Ha, or some. It had a different title at that time. Okay. Um, and uh, we did the the Troma System, which was really funny. It was a, a takeoff on an infomercial. And we did segments where, you know, you get this trauma kit in the mail, which has like a piece of actual film from trauma and stickers of Toxie and a, a, a VHS of, of trailers from the movies. And your life will change. You know <laughs> what I mean? Your life will change. So I played this like really whacked out housewife who was like really disgusting and horrible and just like frumpy and, you know, real piece of work. But I got the trauma system, and then the next thing you know, I'm sitting by a pool in a bathing suit, and there's two hunky guys giving me a massage just because I got the trauma system. Oh, yeah? Isn't that great? That's fabulous. That's what happens. I mean, you, wound, you wound up actually going to Cannes, right? Yes. And, and uh, representing, was it a specific film that they were releasing? You were it was. It was. In 95, I did Tromeo and Juliet, and I did not go to Cannes uh, for that movie. Um, 99, May 99, I went to Khan uh, promoting Terra Firma. Terra Firma. What we got here is your basic serial killer. You know, your killer's choices of victims indicate some sort of personal animosity against you and your company. Family values must be saved. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is a trauma movie! Well, I read your article in, I think, Videoscope. Yeah. About your your my uh, con adventure experiences over there. Yeah, my description still holds. It's um, it's Miami Beach with you know every you know shady LA type transplanted there. That's what it was like in the south of France. Yeah, I know. You said you were, thought you had your own room, and then you wind up uh, camping out with about. Oh yeah, the Tromites were coming people. from all over the country. Yeah. See, we got there. We're from New York. We had our space all planned out, but Lloyd, being the generous man that he is, all throughout the year, he's traveling to Germany, he's traveling to France, he's, he's traveling all over the world, and he's saying to young kids who are major fans and want to work for the company, an apprentice, meet us in Cannes, we'll put you up, no problem. So then you, we get there, and all of a sudden, you're standing in this room of maybe 40 kids, and you're saying, where are you guys staying? We're staying here, so it was like okay, this yeah, is a nightmare. Here, here, here. It would mean like here <laughs> and here and here, yeah. and you get out of bed and you have to be very careful that you don't crush one of the you know yeah. people's heads because yeah they were there, they yeah. were all over the place. Your article was very funny. I really, I really enjoyed yeah. that. But, um, yeah. uh, I want to talk about Tromeo and Juliet. Yes, because uh, that 
Because you a, must. Yes, it was a very <laughs> unique, unique movie, and yeah. I, got, I got a lot of laughs out of it. I'm, Good. I'm sure they were intended. You mm -hmm. know, because uh, even with the blood and gore, it was funny. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was really funny. Yeah. And you, uh, you were, you had a very different look in that one. You were. Say then. And uh, I'd like you to tell us the story about. It. I think you said something about the people who worked on the film thought that that was that was you with all oh, the tattoos. Yeah, yeah. The kids. Um, Trauma is very dependent on <clears throat> kids who want to be filmmakers helping out making the movie to do all of the, the grunt work. Um, so when we're making Tromeo and Juliet, I had tattoos all over my body and fake piercings all over my body, but I really did get a, a belly piercing yeah. just so I could experience it. So I, that was real. Um, but I had t uh, piercings all over my face and all over. And um, I had to go into makeup every morning, and they would, you know, touch up the tattoos and everything. So everything looked really good and very real. Yeah. I mean, it was really real. And uh, after the movie, I went to the rap party. And I had none of the piercings. I had none of the tattoos. And uh, some of the kids are like, it was like I, I was a leper all of a sudden. They thought I was cool during the movie because they were really like that. You have to understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, behind the camera. That's what the people really look like. The people in front of the camera, it was all makeup. Yeah. And it was sort of weird. But um, so they they weren't um, they weren't into me oh, after really? the movie. Yeah. That big a difference, huh? Yeah. Um, Very prejudiced. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was impressed with the fact that they that they actually uh, did the iambic pentameter poetry. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, like somebody did their homework and really really knew. Uh, James Gunn. Yeah. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, uh, a very, I think it should be seen because it it it, it really was. Uh, I mean, it really held me. It was. It, it had enough going on and some very good people in it, yourself included, mm -hmm. as Ness. Yes. Uh, the uh, Ness, the nurse. Nurse for uh, for Juliet. Yeah. Uh, do you keep in touch with any of these people from these? Not films? really. Um, I still see Will around. Will Keenan, who plays Tromeo. He was in Terra Firmer, and he did the casting for Terra Firmer, and he started to do the casting for uh, Citizen Toxie, the Toxic Avenger Part 4, but then he dropped out. Mm -hmm. um, he had other stuff come up, because his, his career is really taking off in the independent film world. Oh. Um, uh, Jane Jensen, who played Juliet, right. she went off um, to start a band, and she was signed by a uh, label, and she lived in L.A. for a long time, and then she moved back to New York. And um, she's just really been involved with music. And mm -hmm. I saw her at Troma not too long ago, maybe four or five months ago, mm -hmm. for the first time in years. Oh. And she looks really good. That's great. I, I just uh, I don't want to forget to talk about your radio stuff. You've done so much that it's going to be hard to cover it's it all. It's a two-parter. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Uh, would you come back again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Is that uh, was Zachary one or two parts? That was two parts. Yeah, see, the whole that's, and then think how much longer his career is than mine. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true, but. Uh, you know what, yeah. say, Debbie, answer everything with a yes or no. Was that fun? <laughs> yes. Okay, now we're going to move on. Was yeah, that right. fun? Uh, what date do you pay your taxes? April 15th. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, you're, you had, you've been on two radio shows. One, three. One, three? Four. Three or four. Four. Oh gosh, I'm not up to date. I know the WBAI one. Yes. And uh, how long did that go? That was oh. uh, six months. That's all? Yeah. Oh, because I... Yeah. All right. Maybe but eight. Six or eight months. With Peter... Peter Schmidt, Schmidt, Schmidt. yes. Mm -hmm. And then... And it's now called uh, Oblique Strategies. Oh, I didn't know. It yes, had it's a Peter Schmidt title. Okay. Uh, but you're you're uh, doing one now, and you're, you're uh, audio streaming it. Yes. At... Iada.com. That's e y a d a. dot com. Dot iada. dot com. Iada. dot com. Uh, and your partner is Tim Reed. Tim Reed, the movie guy. Mm -hmm. And you want to tell us something about what you what you do on that? Well, we talk about movies. We talk about um, anything to do with movies. We talk with actors, directors, producers, writers, just other regular folks who like movies. We talk to people who have websites that dedicate their websites to movies. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, fans on as well as celebrity mm -hmm. um, interviews. Because I, I heard you talking about uh, the Marx Brothers at one point and everything. Yeah, they're so good. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, are, you, are you a fan of, uh, are you a comedy oh, type of person? You know, not really, but the Marx Brothers, Monty Python, 
Um, I love Woody Allen. I like um, some of Mel Brooks. I mean, I have to like comedy if I like Lloyd Kaufman. Ah, uh, yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But I am, I am more uh, involved with horror. I love horror. Yeah. Yeah. Um, being signaled here, we have two minutes. I know. So, uh, Pressure. I, I did, well, I got to get into uh, the Slice Girls. Uh, how did that happen? And what? And I know oh you my had a, God! Made a CD. Yeah. That's a yeah. takeoff on the Spice Girls. Yes, it uh, is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Play Isis Slice okay. in the in the group. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a poster book, a video, CD, all of the merchandise you'd ever want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the the group was really just. We just did one CD and that was it. It was just a, a spoof on the, the Spice Girls. We put horror movie lyrics to their tunes, to their popular tunes. Oh, interesting. Like, yeah. um, Wanna Be, I think, because I only remember my versions now. Wanna Be, their, their famous song, We Made Wanna Haunt Me. And okay. we did it like that. And they're just really fun cute i mean it's the type of thing um during halloween a lot of radio stations will play the songs yeah. but it didn't really get that much mileage beyond that okay well so. people know about it but I, I have to wrap up by asking you what are you working on now okay and what's what's coming out what do you want to plug so anything much, so, so much. well we have a minute b-movie survival guide oh gotta yes. get it gotta get it amazon.com get it yeah um, but debbie's um, a writer she she yeah she, she, see. Uh, one minute Okay, be quiet. This, this is my be... wait, wait, wait. This is my <laughs> minute. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> American slash no, not slash dash American dash nightmare dot com, a movie that I'm shooting later this year. Go to the website and check it out. Um, Demonium. Go to demonium dash the movie dot com. Another movie I'll be working on, but that one won't be till January, February next year. Okay. Um, go to iata dot com. For the radio show, don't miss that Sunday nights. Saturday and Sunday. That's what, but you can hear it any time over, you can hear it over, any over time. the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Debbie, I'm sorry. This this we, we did our half hour. It's, <laughs> You're stressing I, me out. I'm Was there sorry. something that I didn't say? No, we just we just ran. Thank out you of time. for having me. Thank you so much for coming. This is one of our more fun shows. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Great. See you on front row next time. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs>